I'm sure you know the encounter that Jesus had where he says to his, uh, uh, his apostles, who do the people say I am? And they go through this litany. They say you're a prophet. You know, you're, you're John the Baptist come back from the dead. You're Jeremiah. And then Jesus looks at him and he says, who do you say I am? And Peter says to him, you are the Christ, the Son of God. Right? That's who he is, who came to bring life. He is the Son of the living God. He is God. When people were leaving him because his word was too difficult, he said to them, will you also leave? And they said, where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. These are the words of eternal life. We have a ministry of reconciliation. We have, the, the, we have been entrusted with God's word. He has written his word on the tablets of his heart, our hearts. He has poured his love into our hearts through his Holy Spirit. We have been given those eternal words to go out and not sympathize with the dead, but to use that resurrection power of God's word and call people into eternal life. To raise the dead. At any cost to ourselves. And that is so much of what the Sermon on the Mount is about. Mm. It's not sympathy that the Lord offers. It's life that he offers to whosoever will receive it. You know, Job had sympathizers. You know the story of Job? Man, you want to talk about having some, some issues? Job had some issues. But his sympathizers, for all the good they did him, what, what did they do for him? Nothing. They made him miserable, all right? But then there was a young man called Elihu came along. And Elihu brought the life-giving word of God. And he confronted Job with it. You know, he didn't sit there and sympathize, oh, poor Job, look at what has happened to you, look what you're going through. He brought the Word of God in power. And after that, that brought, all of a sudden, now you see God himself having a conversation with Job. Why? Because Elihu had set it up. You know, you can go out and talk to somebody about, about the Lord. Yes. And that could lead them into having conversations with the Lord, life-giving conversations with the Lord. All right. The word could be the spark that but, ignites. You know, we should have that same attitude that was in Elihu. Here's what Elihu said. He said, for I'm full of words. The spirit within me constrains me. Behold, my belly is like unvented wine, like new wineskins. It's about to burst. Let me speak that I may get relief. Let me open my lips and answer. Let me now be partial to no one nor flatter any man. For I do not know how to flatter, else my maker would soon take me away. Do you have that compulsion? Do you, are you filled with God's word and God's love so you can't restrain yourself from speaking those words of life to the people who need to hear it? Or are we trying to please men? That's what, that's what Elihu said. If I, was, if, I, if I was flattering, if I was concerned about what people thought of me, my maker would soon take me away. Sympathy. Poor baby. Poor baby coddles the flesh, yes, it does. which is destined to perish, while comfort, rise and be healed, stirs the spirit. You know, I, I had this conversation with Alice a long time ago, because I know what my flesh is like, okay? Hallelujah for the strength of the spirit of God within me. But my, from, from many years of being unsaved, I knew, you know, if I don't, if I wake up in the morning, I don't feel good. I want to lay there in bed and I want to say, oh, I want Alice to come up to me and say, oh, poor baby, you want some hot chocolate? That's what, that's what my flesh likes, you know. I, that's, that, that's sympathy. And I told her, here's the deal. If I do that, I want you to come up to me. Look at me with those loving eyes. And I want you to say to me, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Because that's what I need to hear. That's right. I don't need sympathy. I need the comfort of God's word, the power of God's word in my life. And so do you, and so does everybody else out there. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus, when he was on the way, and we talked about this a little bit last week, when he was on the way to the tomb to call Lazarus, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes. And he encountered Martha, Lazarus' sister. He said to her, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. John eleven twenty five. 25. You have 
If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't, you know what? Do it turn, now. Turn this thing off. Take a break. Take a break. Amen. Turn this off. Go get on your face before God. Amen. And cry out to receive that wonderful yes. gift of eternal life that he sent his son Jesus to go to the cross in your place to give you. God's love about the heavens God's love deeper than the sea Love always watching over you.